If you have your Bibles, turn to the book of Mark, chapter number 7. And I will be starting with verse number 31. And reading through verses 37. After region, leaving the region of Tyre, Jesus went through Sidon toward the Galilean Sea, through the region of the ten cities. Some people brought to him a man who was dead and could hardly speak. And they begged Jesus to place his hand on him for healing. Jesus took him away from the crowd by himself and put his fingers in the man's ears that had spit and touched the man's tongue. Don't worry, we're not going to have a show and tell today. <laughs> Looking into heaven, Jesus sighed deeply and said, A father, which means open up. At once his ears opened, his twisted tongue was released, and he began to speak clearly. Jesus gave the people strict orders not to tell anyone. But the more he tried to silence them, the more eagerly they shared the news. People were overcome with wonder, saying, He does everything well. He even makes the deaf to hear and gives speech to those who can't speak. This is the Word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Thank you, Lord, for allowing us to be a part of your will. Thank you, Lord God, for allowing us to be here. And I say thank you for giving me, giving me yet another opportunity to share what you have revealed to me, to your people. I pray, Lord God, that the words that come from you, not me, do not land on deaf ears, deaf ears but be embraced and received. So that hearts can be changed for your glory. Lord God, allow the words of my mouth and meditation of my heart to be pleasing and acceptable to you, Lord, in your sight. For you are our Lord and our Redeemer. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. In our reading, we discover the second underdog in this segment of scripture and this underdog happened to be a deaf and mute man and he was an underdog due to his inability to hear and speak uh, these limitations put him in a special category of being protected by the religious laws at this time, since he was deemed unable to be taught enough to keep the law. So he was seen as someone who could not fully be in a deep, passionate relationship with God. Because he was unable, in the religious folks' eyes at the time, to properly practice the law, which meant that he couldn't even fully accept God. Due to his limitations, he was neither projected or expected to make huge spiritual leaps of faith, no matter how hard he tried, because he could not hear nor speak. Well, everything changed for this man the day that a crowd of people brought him to Jesus so that Jesus could lay his hand on him. You see, word had traveled again that Jesus was in town and that Jesus had special powers and many folk in the crowd wanted to see Jesus' power at work. 
other words, and many words, many of the people in the crowd didn't bring the deaf man to Jesus so that he could win in life. Instead, they brought the deaf and mute man to Jesus so that they could be entertained by Jesus. You see, during this time, musician, m m uh, uh, musicians uh, or illusionists became very popular. An illusionist is a person who used tricks and different tactics that are deceptive to the eye. And people looked at Jesus merely as a magician, someone who can entertain them. Well, I just want to stop right now because this is very important for us to realize because he's still the same today as he was yesterday. And he's going to be the same forevermore. And the fact that he didn't come into this world to entertain us, church. He came into this world to empower us divinely so that we may know who he is. So I hope you didn't come today to be entertained. If you did so, you are wasting your time. If we came to entertain, just to entertain for the purposes of entertaining choir, musicians, sound man, preacher, guess what? We're wasting our time. Because we're here to uplift Jesus Christ, the Savior of the world. Amen. He didn't come just for entertainment purposes. But actually the healings, miracles, signs, and wonders that he performed proved his Messiahship that was actually prophesied. As we see in Isaiah 35, 5, and 6, to let people know when you see the chosen one bringing sight to the blind, bringing Hear the hearing abilities to the deaf and giving boldness of speech to people who couldn't speak before, that's a big sign to let you know that the true Messiah has come. So this was an underdog. He wasn't expected to succeed in life, nor was he projected to succeed in life. But he won. Didn't he? He won favor with God. How did he do that? In verse 33, it lets us know how he did that. It says Jesus brought him out of the crowd to get one-on-one -on -one with him. He won in life because he submitted to God's call. To come closer to Jesus. To have one-on-one -on -one time. To get honest with God. So Jesus took him away from the crowd by himself. And he put his fingers in the man's ears. He spat on the ground and touched the man's tongue. Singling to this man who could not speak nor hear that I'm about to do something great in your life. We don't read here that the man resisted it. But he stood there and allowed God to touch him in a unique and powerful way. And Jesus spoke to him and told his senses to be opened. And they were. His senses were functioning at last, as one writer put it. To where now he knew he was in touch with God. He was in touch with the world he lived in. And he was able to speak. Now today, church, we may be underdogs. Not because of any physical limitations, but because our spiritual senses are blocked. 
But be of good courage, underdogs, because we can still win when we accept the Lord's call to come with Him. Amen? Amen. I said we can win when we accept the Lord's call to come to Him. To be called out of the way of the world. To allow Jesus Christ to work in your life. To allow Him to touch you so that you will know His ways. And so that in all that you do, you may glorify Him. Alone time is what I'm talking about. Spending time with Jesus, church, prepares us underdogs to be successful in all ways that bring glory to Him. When we spend time with Jesus, we see specifically in this scripture that He can open up your ears and He can give you a boldness of speech. Why do we need to have our ears open, church? So we don't become deaf, amen? And what I mean by deaf, I'm talking about insensitive to God's voice, which will make it very difficult for us to be able to accept His truth. We see an example of people having deaf ears in Jeremiah 26, 1 through 9. When God told Jeremiah to preach his heart out and do not hold back. To tell the children of Judah that they need to repent and turn from their wicked ways because they're going to become a fallen nation. But the scripture tells us that the children of God at the time ignored what he had to say. And at the end of the sermon, they wanted to actually kill Jeremiah. Because they had deaf ears, they could not discern what God was saying to them versus what the devil was saying to them. They thought that they were okay. And what was happening, they were actually worshiping the God of Baal. Who encouraged them to harm their children. And encouraged them to do all kinds of weird acts to each other. But they didn't want to hear God's voice. And the scripture tells us that their ears became dead. So we need Jesus to touch our ears so that we can discern what's right and wrong. Amen. We've got so much influence in the world today. We allow speaking into our minds to where we will begin to actually believe what the world has to say to you. Why do we need our tongues to be touched? So that we can clearly speak the gospel to others. And also there are peoples in your people in your surrounding that need understanding. And speech is needed to help you to help people Understand the truth. Isn't it a beautiful thing, Joel Church? Isn't it beautiful and great to realize that Jesus desires to change our hearts and to open our spiritual senses? Isn't it wonderful to realize that you don't have to be an underdog in this world? Not knowing what God's will is and not being able to speak the truth boldly. With those who come to Him with faith, who acknowledge Him as Lord and Savior, will be, can be, spiritually healed and made well. 
You know, sometimes our hearts are very far from Him due to the distractions and other things that we entertain, due to our lack of humility, due to our lack of trust in Him, and due to our own need to be touched by Jesus. But God calls us still. He calls us, church, to get personal with Him. One-on-one -on -one time with Him. So that He can touch us. So that we can be touched by Him. Now how can we position ourselves? to get personal with God. The best way that we can do that is to come to Him through and by repentance. That's the best way for us to position ourselves to be able to be touched by Him, to be able to understand His will, and to be able to be bold with His Spirit, to repent. To have a change of heart in mind that involves sincerity and a turning away from our sins, from our distractions. I don't know what's distracting you. I can only speak for myself, but oftentimes you will find me like this. <laughs> And like that at the same time. <laughs> the smartphone. The television. The news. What my neighbor is doing or not doing. And I can allow all that stuff to cause my heart to be distant from God. But at the same time, he's calling me to cast all my cares upon him because he cares. Amen. Amen. And he doesn't want me living in fear or living a life in him in the dark. So in order for me to be positioned to be touched by Him, to be moved by Him, to learn from Him, and to receive His bonus. I have to find myself kneeling down in a posture of, in a position of repentance. How about you this morning? Is God calling you to surrender. Again. Amen. And again. And again. If he has done so, I'm going to do something unique today. Because we find out in the scripture, God does things uniquely. And he often does things in ways that we don't expect him to. This message spoke to you today and you feel the need to repent with your preacher and ask the Lord to forgive him of his sins and ask the Lord to forgive you of your sins and to empower you and give you the strength to overcome whatever that sin or sins may be. Won't you come and join me by the hand and we'll have a prayer together and ask for the Lord to help us. Will you play some music and give people time to come? and to respond.
thank you once again for being here with us today. We thank you, Lord God, for speaking to us and allowing us to hear your voice. Lord God, we are here humbly. We're not here to entertain, but we're here to please you. And Lord God, we are standing here because we recognize that we are imperfect. We recognize that we are sinners and we fall short of your glory. But Lord God, we don't want to remain in that status of sinners for the rest of our lives. We are here today because we need your help. We need your strengthening to open up our ears so we can hear what thus saith you. We are here so that we can gain trust in you and receive a spirit of boldness so that we can clearly explain to others the gospel message. Forgive us, Lord God, we pray. Now, if you feel led by God to repent of your sins, and you really, really mean it, I'm going to ask you to repeat after me. Lord Jesus, I am a sinner. And I ask you, Lord, to forgive me of all my sins. And to cleanse me from all unrighteousness. For your glory. In Jesus name. In Jesus name. Amen. 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 God bless you. Resurrection of the body and the life everlasting. 